Today we are going to be talking you guys through a compilation of clips from Moving On Parts 1 and 2. We believe that Roman is actually deceit in disguise for the entire time the Sides and Thomas are in the Mind Palace. These clips are coupled with the fact that in the Mind Palace, deceit would be undetectable, and if any side noticed him, he could keep their mouth shut. In other words... Bullshit. This dark's deceit in disguise! Five, six, seven, eight. No need to demonstrate! Alright, so like, <laughs> I feel like Roman definitely would not have asked him to stop demonstrating. No, because he's, his creativity would encourage that. Like, I, I feel like he probably... If this is really Roman, he, like, would have been the one to do it, actually. Like, yeah. Roman would have either joined or would have been the actual one to demonstrate, so. You think he'd be excited about that, but he was just... He was... There was nothing. But he was just like, oh, you suck, kinda. So. Oh, uh, look! The first community theater award you ever received, a golden apple. Oh, you remember? Thank you, Fruit of Knowledge. That's... <laughs> thank you for making an appearance there. Loved that. I can't even, well, because there was like the whole thing with the Duke and the Duke's song. He was literally the snake from the Garden of Eden. The snake just offered him a morsel from the Tree of Knowledge. That's what that was. It the, was a golden out. I don't even know what to say anymore. <laughs> we didn't know the Duke was actually referencing moving on part one when he said that line. It wasn't him and, it wasn't Janice. It was Janice and Thomas. Constantly escaping into your mind to get away from real life, wondering when you were going to start liking girls, creating these other worlds where things just made more sense. Ah, yes, those were hectic and busy times for me. Well, that's about the time that you upgraded from small nuisance to giant thorn in our side. And for a good reason. Yeah. So, <laughs> that was A, not, not Roman's voice at yeah, all. Bitty. That was just... What? <laughs> and, um... Well, the fact that he brought up Virgil's negativity, like, we know that they, like, because accepting anxiety had just happened, so, like, yeah, they so were they still... Yeah, they just accepted him, but, like, they were, yeah, I know Roman was still kind of iffy about it, but he literally just said giant thorn in our side about Virgil, like, yeah, it, it didn't happen. It almost seemed like a swipe at him, you know, yeah. like, it was just, oh, yeah. Oh, that's funny. So I might not have had Roman create half as many of the stories and worlds as he did without Virgil giving me reason to. That's weird. Well, fortunately, things make more sense now. I feel like Virgil and Roman's looks at each other were very different things. I feel like Virgil was like, huh, I never looked at it like that. And Roman's was like, almost there was something behind it, some sort of recognition or... I mean, needing anxiety was the thing they literally talked about for so long in the last episode. And it was like, Roman forgot about all of that and was just like, we, we need anxiety. Like, Question mark? Like it was, he literally looked like confused or like realized something. Yeah, like, it like was this like was weird. a new revelation. It was weird to him that Virgil was necessary in the group. Uh, Boy, times were amazing back then. Some might say way better. Oh, you mean like before Virgil left the dark side? And I'm really glad Roman can no longer play any instrument. That sucks. Because we, like, know he's, like, really good at art, even though Thomas yeah. isn't. And so he should have, as creativity, should have the ability like to play Like, he can paint the Mona Lisa. Like, what? So he, there's, like, I feel like, yeah, like, that probably was, like, supposed to be a funny joke, but it really came across as, like, somebody, like, he, Roman would have been able to play that instrument. I, I, I have a feeling. And he kind of sang really weird, too. Yeah. He's like, oh, uh, yeah. Oh man, remember when our outfits used to look like this? Wow, so embarrassing. Ah, oh, feels like only yesterday. We changed in the last video. That's because they did change in the last video, but you know who wouldn't have known that? Janice. So he was like, hey, look at these outfits from so long ago, because he didn't know. Not for anything, but when he pretends to be Patton and can lying be good, he's wearing Patton's old cardigan. Yeah, and don't forget, he he wears the wrong tie for Logan, too, so it's not like he, like, is up to date on their outfits. Like, he wouldn't have known that they changed in the last video. And he wouldn't have... I mean, he wouldn't have known that Patton... Because Patton doesn't get his cardigan until the end of this episode, so he wouldn't have known that Patton has a new cardigan when he pretended to be him. I used to think this was the coolest thing. It has buttons. What? Get out. That seems like a very patent thing to get excited about, so I have to assume that that was sarcasm. I mean, Roman's not the, ooh, buttons kind of guy. <laughs> yeah, I have no other words. Hot, <laughs> crossed, 
funds. Again, with playing the music, musical instrument badly, and also, he sang really weird. Like, Roman, you would assume he would kind of want to show off his singing, even if he was just singing hot cross buns. So I feel like that was very, he was singing very oddly. Because Roman's very theatrical about it, and that was just not. That just seemed like he didn't want attention, which is just very not Roman. I would expect Roman to, like, whip, like, Phantom of the Opera out on the recorder. Yeah. Like, no. I know. Not he sings hot, hot cross, cross buns. buns and not singing. The songs you used to put onto mix CDs and play in the car. I mean, Disney mania much? I'm sorry, Roman is not excited about Disney? Did he just make fun of Thomas for listening to Disney? That sounded very, very condescending. Just Disney mania much? Like, what? 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 Why? He's literally Disney guy. Like, that's his whole thing. Had like uh, yeah, I and just... he makes fun of di like red flag here. Hello. <laughs> yes, I think that we established that quite a long time ago, Spex. Oh. Um. Well, first of all, that was just not Roman's voice at all. And two, he used the nickname Spex, but he not only has called Patton Spex before. So he's, like, using the same nickname. Which he's never done. Which he's literally never done anything before. And his mannerisms are very Janice. And he, like, um, his, like, the way he's holding his, like, face and his eyebrows are just not Roman. Um, yeah, but he would never use the same nickname, and especially on another side. Yeah. Like, if he was going to call another side, a side Specs again, he would probably call Patton Specs again, I would assume. Yeah. Their anxiety worsens. <laughs> Virgil, that's not happening, right? No. I'm gonna take that as a yes. Come on, let's go. It's time to end this experiment. Wait, Wait a minute, you can't go now. We haven't even started reminiscing about all the Broadway shows that he's seen. <sighs> so he, um... He, well, so first of all, Roman was distracting them from the conversation at hand. Well, he wanted them to stay there, and Logan was making it sound like they needed to leave. Yeah, as soon as Logan was like, we need to go, come on, and Roman was immediately like, hey, look at something else, and then... And then when Virgil agrees, his mouth gets covered, and it doesn't seem like, like, it, I mean, I feel like it was Janice that made him say no, because that was obviously a lie, like, Logan even said it was a lie, and then when Logan was like, that was a lie... So Virgil wasn't covering his mouth because of yeah. Janice. He was covering his mouth in a reaction to Janice making him lie. Yeah. Because there was no way. He, he was going to say yes. And Logan knew it. Yeah, but and Roman Virgil wanted looked, to stay. Exactly. And Virgil looked surprised that he said no. And then the second that Logan is like, he just lied, that was a yes. Roman's like, hey, more stuff. Let's think about more stuff. Hey, do you guys remember the fifth season of Lost? So there was this, like, big moment where Logan had, like, this whole outburst and friggin' sank out of the room, like, was so done with them that he left. And then Roman was like, let me change the subject again. Because he wants them to stay there. Which is weird because it's not, it would be different if it was Patton bringing things up to distract them, but it was specifically Roman, which was interesting. And you didn't- Roman is creativity, like, you wouldn't think he would care about something like this, whereas Janice would. Because- Because he's also self-preservation. And technically, if Thomas was, like, flourishing in this relationship, it would be considered yeah. self- like, helping yourself if you got back together with the guy. And really, self-preservation is almost like lying to yourself, which is kind of like- what he's wanting Thomas to do in the situation. Like, he's just wanting him to kind of stay in the past when everything else is going to keep moving forward. Because clearly there were problems that caused them to break up, and Roman's almost asking Thomas to ignore them and continue. Which is kind of a lie. Yeah. I mean, the literal voice of reason just left. No, love is not about reason, Thomas. Love is about taking a chance. You took a chance when you asked a guy out three years ago, and it led to you having some of the happiest moments of your life. Now, your heart is crying out to you. Patton, cry out to him. What? Go ahead, cry out. Uh... See? Now, are you going to ignore his cry, Thomas, or are you going to take a chance? So Thomas gets concerned that Logan left, and, of course, Roman immediately interrupts. And then at the end of this clip, he just says something that is just so not Roman, and it's not in Roman's voice with any of Roman's mannerisms, and I don't like it. It's the, just the ickiest 
you could get because it's just literally in Deceit's voice. Take a chance how? By picking up your phone, dialing his number, and charging back into Love's Battlefield. Yeah. Mm. Hello? <gasps> That's him. Hang on! Uh, why did you hang up? Virgil told me to! Why did you listen to him? He was loud. Hang it, as thick it is, I'm getting sick of this. No, 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 no. What do no, I do no, no, now? <laughs> <laughs> I a sloppy situation here. Oh, the backup idea. Text him. Text him what? Uh, tell him you butt dialed him. What? A butt dial? Really? So Janice is self-preservation, so he would want Thomas to get back together with this guy if he thought that that was best for his own self-interest, even if he was lying to himself about if it would even work or not, because obviously there must have been problems or something, because otherwise they wouldn't have broken up, but Roman is kind of asking Thomas to ignore that. And then, like, when Thomas, like, hung up and Virgil, because Virgil talked so loud, Roman was really weird like he acted really weird he was like jumping up and down and he was talking in a voice that we haven't really heard him talk in before not like janice's voice or anything but he was talking like really high and like agitated which was yeah. interesting as well uh look i'm thinking off the fly here thomas and you do have a bodacious backside stop no i mean that thing has a mind of its own i am not gonna lie to him then let your tush do the talking what let your bottom do the bluffing Keep your lips locked. Let your cheeks and hips talk. My hips do not lie, Princey. I'm just saying, you have a very persuasive posterior. I'm so sorry, I can't stop. No. Um, this is just like a interesting note, but um, well, we, as we know, Janice is a dark side, so he would be spending a lot of time with Remus and not a lot of time with Roman. So, um, he talked about butts for a very long time. Like a bit as too long. Actually, way too long. Way, way too long. Like Remus which, length. Which is how long Remus talked about them and dealing with intrusive thoughts. So I, we ponder, maybe it's because he assumes that Remus and Roman are a little more alike than he thinks. Since they're twins. Since they're twins. So he was like, oh, if Remus talks about this, Roman will talk about this kind of thing. But so Roman never, character, ever talks. But he's never talked like this before, and he never talked like this again. Yep. Roman lying is wrong. Yeah, that's a side of myself that I would prefer not to feed into. Well, then what are you going to do? Tell him that you called in an act of desperation because for months you've been quietly hoping that everything would go back to the way that it was before? I... Are you going to tell him about all the times you fantasized about him calling you, saying that he's ready to try again? Are you going to tell him that you want him back? Because that's the truth. So Roman literally... <laughs> is suggesting that Thomas lie. And then means... Patton, through his gritted teeth, says, Roman, lying is wrong. And I don't think we've ever really seen kind of an anger like that from Patton No, because Patton never gets angry. Especially before this point in the series. And um, it was, like, very uncharacteristic of him, and you could tell there was, like, something else behind his eyes. Like, he was not just angry about... A silly lie about butt dialing. He no. was clearly it was clearly some sort of passive aggressive thing. And then Roman says, because that is the truth, which is just it's just not a Roman thing to care about, really. Yeah, I mean, because in Can Lying Be Good, Roman was the one who was um kind of suggesting lying, but was also he was, sure of it. He was so pretty he, neutral about it in a way. Yeah. But this time he was kind of leaning toward it. Yeah. More than he usually would. But you do. I know you do. I know all of your dreams and fantasies. I'm the dreamy fantasy guy. So he says, I'm the dreamy fantasy guy. Not really something Roman would say, but it is something Janice would say, because he's done that for all of the sides. He, he, when, he, when he's Logan, he says, I, the brilliant Logan. And he does the same thing for Patton, so why wouldn't he do it for Roman? It's not like any of the other sides are like, constantly clarifying what they are because everybody knows and um this was also like kind of at the beginning of the series so thomas kind of established what they represented in almost every episode up to this point like he was always like oh you're my logical side or oh you're yeah. my creative thinking that kind of thing so there was not one reason why why roman had to justify himself we know we as an audience and it's not like character thomas doesn't know like he's aware yeah. that Tom, that roman is creativity but so there janice wasn't... has done that for every character that he's imitated because he wants to almost verify that he is in fact this character even if he's just mimicking them no it's not all your fault roman that was just a gross unconvincing way to say roman i'm not convinced that's roman 
yellow, black, black yellow, yellow, black, yellow, yellow black, 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 and, and yellow. yellow. That's not a real guys and dolls pamphlet. No, we we did we did do some research, and it's yeah, I, that's it's a never, fake playbill. Never seen a guys and dolls um, yeah, playbill that's uh just white. I mean, frick, just black and yellow. And, and then, of course, the fish hook, which is also black and yellow. Thank you very much. We met when we both auditioned for Guys and Dolls. We were both cast and quickly became friends. Yeah. So, like, just off the bat, this is not a very Roman look. He's very, um, he's, he's in a very Janus, like, pose, like, the way he's just holding himself. His facial expression. He yeah. raises his left eyebrow, which... Only Janice ever really raises one eyebrow like that. Um, and then just just a cute little add-on is uh, um, he's holding the pamphlet with his left hand. Now this is important because Thomas is a lefty and the only sign that is an established right hand is Roman because Remus is a left hand. So... Well, it was my favorite musical and I can't bear to listen to its music mm, because of the outdated and unsavory gender roles filled out by the cast of characters so we know that roman doesn't really think about stuff like that because if you go back to like the the disney episode like he's arguing virgil on how things that can be perceived as like weird or creepy in disney are actually like cute or romantic so why would he point that out in this musical when it should be someone like janice or virgil pointing that out, like the negative side of things. This is very reminiscent of um, Janice's perspective during the courtroom episode and um, how he kind of got into the details of society and everything like that. Like Roman yeah, they would have the never, same view of society. Yeah, so Roman would never really bring this kind of... Even if he was thinking about it, he never really would bring it up in conversation. Like, we've never seen Roman sit down and be like, all right, let's discuss classism or yeah, something and in mention, this work. That like, was not Roman's voice that he said that in. No. It was very low, and it was very monotone, and it was not theatrical. And he, he hasn't done that hand thing once in this video or in the last video. And also... um. That's something Janice messes up every time he's he pretends to be a side is their um their vocal kind of ticks that like he um yeah and it's especially difficult with Roman because he talks very Roman strangely a, it's not he almost has an accent it's not like the other side very specific vernacular like he only says certain words he'll opt to say fancier words when given the choice so fishing was so much better with him there. Your uncle? Obviously not. Well, a little clarity never hurt anybody. Well, that was an that was just Remus. That's all I gotta say about that. Yeah. Pat and I had no idea. I suppose I've been contributing to that in some way. Thomas, you should know that though I dream big, where you are in life, it's precisely where you need to be. And the only direction to go is forward. One step at a time not staying stuck in one place. If you're truly destined to be with him, now is not the time to worry about it. You're right, I have to focus on me. So like, after this whole speech that Roman gives, Thomas literally comes to the conclusion that like, it's the better choice for himself. And that is really what, if Janice is part of this episode, that would be what his goal was. was yeah, his to... goal, Roman's goal would have actually been getting back together because he's like the, he is the dreamy fantasy guy. That's what he and does. And romance, he wants that happy So he would have wanted that, but Janice didn't care about that. Janice just originally thought that getting back together with him was what was best for Thomas, but then changed his mind later. And when he realized that, he kind of changed his whole perspective and made Thomas think he needed to focus more on himself, which was self-preservation's goal. You've been so accepting of all of us and our um, eccentricities. You're done tootin'. We will do the same for you, Tin. I'm sorry I had to rhyme it. He just, he looks right at Virgil. <laughs> right at Virgil. Eccentricities. Because don't forget, Janice wants to be accepted, so he looks right at Virgil and is like, you've accepted all of us and our eccentricities when looking at Virgil. So I feel like it's just kind of Janice saying, like, Except me, too. 
give me a say. Well, and I think it's very interesting that this is directly after accepting anxiety. So, God forbid, Virgil had been the one kind of gathering intel on the light sides and giving it to Janus. Janus has all of his connections with the light sides have been cut now. So this could be his way of kind of seeing where they are um, and like whose relationship is strong with who, that kind of thing. Okay, well, I'll, I'll, I'll do the rhyming. In a way, grieving could be just the ticket we need to take that path forward to recovery. That was a mixed metaphor. I'm sorry, I'm not thinking straight. Ever. I'm not straight. Okay, so not only was most of that not really in Roman's voice, but we also know that Roman is great at metaphors, and Janice is not, because he made that one metaphor at the end of the Redux, where it was just another mixed metaphor, and then he was like, I'm sorry, I just came up with it on the spot, that's not really my department, but it is Roman, so you'd think he would be able to come up with a really solid metaphor, but he couldn't. And plus 10 for that gay joke, because that was a great one. Um, I guess, like, it's not really a summary, because you guys... We've been giving you our commentary literally after every clip, but um, just another thing to point out that we didn't really get to is the fact that um, Logan um, kind of disappears right at the beginning when they get into the mindscape, which also could have been seen as one of Janice's goals, because every time Janice is there, it seems that Logan is the first one to figure it out. Obviously, in Can Lying Be Good, he was like, oh, obviously he's deceit, and then well, in the Redux, he was pretending to be Logan. And then immediately upon being pulled into the courtroom, Logan was like, oh, just seats Tipper was pretending to be me, that kind of thing. So he's the one who figures it out. Because logic has no reason to be convinced by lies like they, yeah. This was definitely a lot more unscripted than our past videos, but um, if you guys like this, let, let us know in the comments and we'll um, do more stuff like this in the future.